So again, that's a great question. And, you know, Stacy had mentioned some of it, leading with the no shame pledge, something as simple as a no shame pledge and taking a picture. We always say a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, So just having top leadership saying, hey, here, I identify that there's an addiction issue. Uh, It may not be here, but we want to make sure that you all are comfortable through pictures and selfies and using your own organization's social media platforms um, is a first step. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I also want to say, Jamie, is this takes time. You can't come in and throw a no shame pledge and expect everyone to, you know, not still have their own stigma. If we look at lived experience or personal experience, um, as Stacy mentioned, m- nine times out of 10, someone in your organization has been affected by addiction in some capacity, whether it's directly or indirectly. So it is going to take time. And even with the partnership um, with Athletico, It has taken over two years for us to really work collaboratively and intentionally um, to continue uh, what I'm what I'm hoping I'm going to put it out there in live. Right. uh, Is a long lasting partnership. Um, So that's number one. Number two, I think it's important for people to understand that even as individuals in recovery, you know, we can openly report history of substance use. But we do experience discrimination in the workplace. And we, you know, quite often there are lower levels of acceptance among our colleagues. um, And that may be included uh, or or there may be inclusion of microaggressions, verbal and nonverbal and environmental contempt. So it's important for us not only to deal with the addiction side of things, um, perhaps if someone is actively or inactively um, impacted by this, but also the recovery portion of it and what that looks like in the workplace environment. Um, And it's important for us to create a level of wellness where everyone can share their experiences. 